we are watching and waiting for more details to emerge surrounding President Trump's accusations of wiretapping against the Obama administration. One D.C. insider says it definitely happened. Kathy Aru is that insider. She's a liberal journalist who served as a senior advisor in the Bush administration, and she joins me now. So, Kathy, what do you know? All right, well, my sources this morning, my, my source from the White House told me she thinks it's all true. She said um, there were concerns that Trump, and this is from the White House and the administration, so inside the White House, there were concerns that Trump and his surrogates may have been colluding with the Russians as a possible bargaining chip to influence the election. Therefore, the wiretap was was conducted. Okay, so the idea but, is, in fact, that they went ahead and believed that this information was correct, right. went to the FISA court, right. then, based on probable cause, put the evidence exactly. forward to say, we have this information and belief, and therefore we want this granted. Exactly. It just seems highly suspicious because that seems to be being used for improper uh, means. Exactly. In, in fact, to say, well, we want to spy on them to see what they're doing uh, during this election process right. where there's this tight race between, at the time, candidate Trump and Hillary Clinton. Right, and my source believes it. After seven and a half years with the Obama administration, had heard uh, that there were concerns, and she said that she is not sure who secured the warrant. That's her one question who secured the warrant, but the White House and the administration, they were concerned and they did discuss the wiretapping. Very interesting. I, we have a Geraldo Rivera who's uh, still here with us on set. Uh, based on what she's saying from those inside sources, uh, does that change uh, some of the opinion that you have on this? It, it, it doesn't. Let me just say for a f probable cause in a FISA context is very, very difficult to attain. You really have to have the goods. In this context, in the context of a presidential election, a closely contested election, where these two camps were out to kill each other, mm -hmm. imagine the level of probable cause you would need for a judge to issue a warrant. I, I just think that if this story is true, then there's, there's something very explosive going on. That's why I want the president, President Trump, to tell us that he he misspoke or put it in context. I mean, to talk about Nixon and Watergate and so forth, he, he really owes us a clarification. My source, direct quote, said the intelligence community did its due diligence given the threat of the Russian influence. So it's merely due diligence by conducting the wiretapping. Mm -hmm. They had to do it. There was, something was heard. They did their due diligence. So she is confirming that the White House and the administration was aware of it. Very interesting. Um, so you, what, what's going to happen next, Geraldo, after this? We get this information. Uh, it sounds like, at least, perhaps we don't know because this is just breaking news tonight and the story is developing, but it sounds like perhaps that this did occur and then it, we just have to check into what was the reason behind it. But if they did due diligence and came up with nothing, you know, due it diligence doesn't mean they found something. Right. Due diligence means they were... They were, it was incumbent on them to do the investigation. Could they have done the investigation and found zero? That's what the president said in one of these tweets, that they looked into us, they did these dirty tricks and found nothing. If that's the case, then that's what the president can tell us tomorrow. They did it, they came all over me, they were crawling all over me, they had all these people, and they found nothing. Let, let us know. Well, right, because also then you think about the stories that have been developing um, and happening in the news, the allegations against General Mike Flynn, now the allegations against um, Jeff Sessions, all of these things, it seems, are following the same narrative of pushing the Russian story and trying to tie in uh, President Trump and at the time his campaign and election with them because you even saw that in the WikiLeaks emails with Podesta there was allegations and some of the statements about the Russians and tying the Russians in so that's what I think is very interesting we don't know who secured the warrant that's mm -hmm. what's interesting my source doesn't know we don't know who secured the warrant you mean uh, who which person yeah did the, did the president know I, I can't imagine the president wouldn't know. That's what my I mean, the president believes. couldn't or wouldn't order it, but he had to know. Yeah, the president my, can't my, specifically right. order it himself. Right. It would have to be intelligence agency or the who. FBI putting it forward. But what was the nexus of this? What, in fact, generated this request, this interest? What was it based on? There has to be a legal reason, and it can't be that one side was trying to weigh and tip the election based on their ideology or political orientation. Just the only thing is that General Flynn and Jeff Sessions are not accused of espionage or anything like it. In They're any accused way. of not telling the truth mm -hmm. under oath. That's way different 
than this national security that they knew or they were dealing with the Russians. We got to be clear about that. Absolutely. All right, Kathy and Araldo, thank you so much. And President Obama supporters, they are defending him tonight, saying a president cannot order a wiretap. But rules didn't stop the Obama White House before. Remember when the IRS targeted conservatives? Well, Rick Grinnell has some perspective on that next. Stay with us. White House predecessor Barack Obama wiretapped his offices in New York prior to the election last November. Trump posted a series of tweets decrying the alleged surveillance as, quote, McCarthyism. He didn't, however, provide any evidence or say who informed him about the alleged wiretapping, though he did hint at possible legal action. Barack Obama's spokesman responded to Trump's accusations, saying, this is a direct quote, neither President Obama nor any White House official ever ordered surveillance on any U.S. citizen. Let's bring in former CIA analyst and State Department official Larry Johnson. He joins me live on the line. Very good afternoon to you, Larry. We've heard it said that these are really serious accusations uh, by, by some guests we, we've had on so far. What's your assessment of what Donald Trump's had to say? How big a deal is this? I think it's a huge deal. The problem is Trump probably shouldn't have done this via Twitter because to call it that it was a wiretap is technically inaccurate. And the denials by the Obama people are like Bill Clinton asking what the meaning of is is with respect to was oral sex a sexual act. In this case, uh, I understand from very good friends that what happened was both Jim Clapper John Brennan at CIA were intimately involved in trying to derail the candidacy of Donald Trump. That there was some collusion overseas with, your, with Britain's own GHCQ. That information that was gathered from GHCQ was actually passed to John Brennan and it was disseminated within the U.S. government. This dissemination was illegal. Donald Trump is in essence correct that the intelligence agencies and some in the law enforcement community on the side of the FBI were in fact illegally trying to access, monitor his communications with his aides and with other people. All of this with an end to trying to destroy and discredit his presidency. I don't think there will be any doubt of that. I think it's worth noting that the head of the National Security Agency, uh, an Admiral Rogers, made a journey to Trump Tower shortly after Trump had won. And in the immediate aftermath of his visit, the C and Jim Clapper and others in the intelligence community called for his him to be fired. Now, why did Rogers go to Trump Tower? My understanding is, let's call it, it was to uh, cover himself because he was aware that the NSA had been, the authorities had been misused and abused with respect to Donald Trump. So I think Trump's decision to go out this morning and tweet this was fully intended to send a notice and send word that I don't think he's doing this without evidence. He does have evidence. Uh, I think it was just inartfully expressed in the tweet. You would think that if he's going to make such a serious accusation, do it so publicly, like you said, there would have to be evidence. Do you think we're going, we've not seen a lot of evidence in any of this whole Trump-Russia debacle. Do you think we will see any firm evidence in this case? Well, there's, there, there is no evidence on the side of Russia meddling in the U.S. election. I saw that you had Brent Badowski on earlier, and I simply wish that you folks would ask him a very basic question. Ask him, what specifically did Russia do that influenced the U.S. election? The answer is nothing. The Russia did not set up front companies. Russia did not provide money to the Trump campaign so that they could buy advertising. Ru the Russia was not providing advisors, direct or indirect, as cutouts to advise Trump on how to defeat Hillary Clinton. So the, the classic things that we would see does Russia run intelligence operations against the United States? Yes. And does the United States do that against Russia? Yes. But this is an entirely, completely uh, a different matter. So uh, I, I think what we're seeing here is, the, you know, some think it's an exaggeration, but uh, I do not. There is a genuine effort to try to take out and defeat Donald Trump, even in the aftermath of his election. And there are still senior people in jobs at 
the National uh, Director of National Intelligence Office, the Office of the Central Intelligence Agency, the National Security Agency, that uh, these are senior intelligence executives that ought to be fired, that would be marched right out the door. You talked about you believe that there's evidence there, and Donald Trump, let's be honest, he has been on the ropes a lot since he, he took office. He's been mostly a, a sort of a defensive stance he's taken. Will he be able to produce the evidence? And will he be able to actually sort of take the upper hand in this, this fight against not just the, the former establishment and the Democrats, but also of the media? He's fighting them all on mass, really. Yeah, no, it's, it, listen, this is a coordinated, organized effort. Uh, the, the the Obama, let's call them the Obama remnants, were really shocked that Trump won. So they had no clue coming down the road that he was going to win. Once he won, they genuinely thought that they could do things and plant information in the press that would put so much pressure on him that he would not be able to take the oath of office. And those efforts backfired. That was one of the reasons the so-called uh, uh, dossier on, on Trump's alleged misbehaviors in Russia was leaked. All of this was part of a coordinated, planned campaign by people that are linked to Barack Obama. Now, is, did Barack Obama pick up the telephone and tell Jim Clapper or John Brennan to do X, Y, and Z? No, I don't think that's the case. My understanding, though, is Obama did give the green light when he was briefed on information that had come from British GHCQ to U.S. intelligence officials that he gave the green light to go ahead and try to start distributing and, and using that in an improper way. So uh, this has to be, I think, done very methodically because there are, uh, I, I think, very well could be criminal charges brought against former members of the Obama administration for what they've done. They're, what they're doing is, uh, I think, would fall under the, 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 the definition of sedition. Uh, which I realize sounds very alarmist, but the reality of what's going on is these are not uh, isolated events generated by actions that have been taken by Donald Trump and his surrogates. These are actions that are being generated by opponents of Donald Trump trying to force actions out of the Trump team. Larry, good to speak to you. Thanks for joining us again here on RT. Former CIA analyst and State Department official Larry Johnson giving us his views there. Joining us now, live from Levin TV studio, is the former chief of staff to Attorney General Edwin Meese, a constitutional lawyer and radio talk show host, the great one Mark Levin from his hidden bunker. Mark, thank you very much for joining us this morning. On your Thursday evening radio broadcast, you laid out a devastating case about executive overreach of the Obama administration, which many believe metamorphosized itself to tweets that President Trump sent out on Saturday morning accusing potential wiretapping in Trump Tower. Uh, we want to give you a case here this morning to lay out what you know, what you know about it, and the evidence you have for the potential executive overreach of the Obama administration. Well, pleasure to be here. The evidence is overwhelming. This is not about President Trump's tweeting. This is about the Obama administration's spying. And the question isn't whether it's spied. We know they went to the FISA court twice. The question is, who did they spy on? The extent of the spying. That is, the Trump campaign, the Trump transition, Trump surrogates. And I want to walk you through this, the American people. Exhibit one. Exhibit one. This is all public. Head Street. Two separate sources with links to the counterintelligence community have confirmed that the FBI sought and was granted a Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act court. This is fine. Uh, in October, giving counterintelligence permission to examine the activity of, quote, U.S. persons in Donald Trump's campaign with ties to Russia. Let me go on. This isn't me. They say the first FISA request, sources say, name Trump was denied back in June, denied by the court. Mm -hmm. But the second was drawn more narrowly and was granted in October after evidence was presented of a server possibly related to the Trump campaign and its alleged links to two banks. Now, sources suggest that a FISA warrant was granted to look at the full content of emails and other related documents that may concern U.S. persons. Now, I know people are hung up with Trump's word wiretapping. Well, how'd they get access to this server information? Does it really matter? if it was wiretapping, electronic surveillance, or whatever it was. Exhibit 2, The Guardian, a well-known right-wing British paper. Here it is, uh, 
Quote, the Guardian has learned the FBI applied for a warrant from the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court over the summer in order to monitor four members of the Trump team suspected of irregular contacts with Russian officials. Keep in mind, this is during a presidential election. The sitting president, the incumbent party, is now investigating the presidential candidate of the Republican Party and his campaign to some extent. The FISA court turned down the application asking FBI counterintelligence investigators to narrow its focus. According to one report, the FBI was finally granted a warrant in October. Exhibit 3, McClatchy, another well-known right-wing newspaper. <laughs> Here they have the agencies. Headline, FBI, five other agencies, five other Obama administration agencies pro possible covert Kremlin aid to Trump. The FBI and five other law enforcement intelligence agencies have collaborated for months in an investigation into Russian attempts to influence the November election, including whether money from Kremlin uh, covertly aided presidential-elect Donald Trump. Two people familiar with the matter said the agencies involved in the inquiry are the FBI, the CIA, the NSA, the Justice Department, the Treasury Department's Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, and representatives of the director of the National Intelligence. Are you telling me Barack Obama didn't know it was Mark, going on the six go, agencies? As you hold go on, on, hold why, on, how are hold you on. Do, okay, keep going. I'm not done. I need to make the case. <laughs> because the media seems to be confused about their own reporting. New York Times, another well-known liberal outlet, intercepted Russian communications part of inquiry into Trump associates January 19. The FBI is leading the investigations aided by the NSA, the CIA, Treasury Department's Financial Crimes Unit, the investigators have accelerated their efforts in recent weeks, but have found no exclusive, uh, conclusive evidence of wrongdoing. Listen to this. One official said intelligence reports based on some of the wiretap communications have been provided to the White House. This is the New York Times, Another my right -wing exhibit outlet. four. Another right-wing outlet, Let's yeah. continue. <laughs> New York Times again. NSA gets more latitude to share intercepted communications. In the final days of the Obama administration, uh, the administration has expanded the power of the NSA to share globally intercepted personal communications with the government's 16 other intelligence agencies before applying privacy protection. Now, why would they do this on the way out the door? Well, March 1, Exhibit 6, Obama administration rushed to preserve intelligence of Russian election hacking. In the Obama administration's last days, listen to this, some White House officials scrambled to spread information about Russian efforts to undermine the presidential election and about possible contacts between associates of President-elect Trump and Russians across the government. I'm not done. <laughs> Exhibit 7, New York Times. Flynn is said to have talked to Russians about sanctions Trump took office. Well, where'd they get this information? Well, Mark, you know, the FISA court, they're always monitoring the, uh, the uh, Russian ambassador. And so how do we know that? Maybe they are, maybe they're not. But there's an awful lot of other activity. Sure. Here we have Washington Post. One more. Washington Post, March 2nd. U.S. investigators have examined contacts Attorney General Sessions had with Russian officials during the time he was advising Donald Trump's campaign. The focus of the U.S. counterintelligence investigation has been on communication between Trump campaign officials mm -hmm. and Russia. Listen to this. The inquiry involving Sessions is examining his contacts while serving as Trump's foreign policy advisor in the spring and summer of 2016. This has been going on for a year well, Mark, now. As you do on your yeah. radio program, you lay out a devastating case based on public documents, as you point out, and not right-wing uh, sources, but mainstream left-stream sources. How confident are you that this new this investigation, which was on Russian, so-called Russian hacking, but now the White House says this morning will be broadened to looking into executive overreach? How confident Look, are you they will find something there? I don't know, but let me, they already found something. The issue isn't whether the Obama administration spied on the Trump campaign or transition or certain of its surrogates. The issue is the extent of it. Mm -hmm. They went into court a second time. They were so aggressive. They waited four or five months. They go back in October, weeks before the general election. They narrow their request. All of a sudden, we have leaks coming out on Flynn. Then we have a, oh, a horrible meeting that took place between Sessions and so forth. And I'm telling you, as a former chief of staff to an attorney general of the United States in the Reagan administration, these are police state tactics. Now, what did Barack Obama know? 
He knew everything I just read to you apart, apart from one or two articles. You know how I know? It's in the newspapers. It's right there. So Barack Obama not only knew this, but he gets a daily intelligence briefing. And let me tell you something about daily intelligence briefing. If your attorney general and your FBI is going to the FISA court yep. to get a warrant to investigate aspects of an opposition party in the middle of a general election campaign, how much you want to bet the president of the United States knew that? I don't want to read bet his you on opinion. That. Uh, Mark, we've got to, we were about to hit a hard break. Is there any way you could stick around for one more minute and ask you one more question on this? That's fine. You got it. All right, more with Mark Levin on Fox and Friends right on the, around the corner. Still joining us live from Levin TV studio, former chief of staff to Attorney General Edwin Meese, constitutional lawyer and radio talk show host, the great one, Mark Levin. Mark, I got to tell you, even just in the break, the re response has been overwhelming to the case that you laid out, which is devastating. And Abby and I were talking in the break about sort of where it goes from here, right, Abby? Yeah, that is the question because you've laid out your case in this last block. You're very passionate about the evidence that you have. And, and as Pete said, we have so many people writing us in saying, thank you for speaking uh, your voice. They're right behind you on this. My question, though, how does this play out uh, in the media? How are they going to continue to cover this story? Let me first say, this is the case made by the New York Times, the Washington Post, McClatchy, and the rest of them. I just put it together as a former Justice Department official. And, a, and, and Donald Trump here is being attacked for what he tweeted. Donald Trump is the victim. His campaign is the victim. His transition team is the victim. His surrogates are the victim. These are police state tactics. I am telling you this as a former chief of staff to an attorney general. If this had been done to Barack Obama, all hell would break loose. And it should. And Barack Obama's statement is pathetic. I, we, uh, uh, let me just say this. Where does it go from here? They ought to release both FISA court applications where they sought the one. The one in the summer and the one in October. So we know exactly what they were doing. That's number one. Number two, Congress needs to see the daily presidential intelligence briefings over the past year or so. Those are the beginnings of an, a serious investigation. Number three, for the Republicans in Congress, you control the majority. If the Democrats do not want to assist, and they won't, because I'm starting to think Chuck Schumer and the others are participating in all this cover-up activity, then plow ahead without them. But this is important to the country. We cannot have a sitting presidential administration unleashing six federal agencies' intelligence, and law enforcement, I don't mean the president personally sitting there saying, you know what, Valerie, let's go get him. Obviously, the attorney general and the FBI were involved in this. This is how you get a FISA court application prepared and submitted. Do you, think, do you, think, uh, do you think former yeah. President Obama was involved in this? And if so, how much was he involved? I'm not Nostradamus here. I just think <laughs> that we ought to find out. But I, but I will tell you this. He's more involved than he says. I mean, it's his executive branch. It's his Justice Department. Mine's yeah. for the IRS. All of a sudden, the IRS is, is targeting American citizens. I don't know anything about it. Uh, we have reporters, including James Rose and the AP, where, where the Obama administration did more investigations of reporters than any administration in American history. They're quite capable of these things. But it doesn't matter. We want to know what took place. And there ought to be public hearings on this stuff, too. I agree with the Democrats. Let's get to the bottom of this. So join me. Join us. This is the public record. Yeah. It's the newspaper of record, the New York Times. Let's go. Mark, there's another aspect of this. When you mentioned Chuck Schumer a moment ago, he's been trying to block as many Trump nominations as he can and slow the process. And we had Jay Christian Adams, a former Justice Department official you probably know well, on a couple of hours ago. And he was pointing to something very important here, which is now that Jeff Sessions has recused himself, the person in charge here is going to be a career uh, bureaucrat. There will be career bureaucrats. He said the swamp won because you have people inside justice, some maybe who have been trying to undermine President Trump, who are now in charge of this investigation. And the chances of Chuck Schumer and the Democrats in the Senate uh, you know, confirming the nomination of the deputy attorney general, a Trump loyalist, now seems nil. So they have seized control of this investigation, haven't they? They not only did that, they have squirreled their appointees into the bureaucracy, and they're buying more and more time to do that. Okay, then recess appoint a deputy attorney general. Hmm. Do that. Say, okay, I'm recessing appointing so-and-so as deputy attorney general of the United States. And then, because uh, attorney general uh, Sessions recused himself from matters affecting the Russian investigation and so forth. Mm -hmm. Then the deputy attorney general who is recessed appointed is the acting attorney general for the purposes 
of an investigation related to this. So Christian is right. He served the justice in the Civil Rights Division. I'm right. I served as chief of staff. I know exactly what's going on. He knows exactly yeah. what's going on. And the administration needs to respond. Well, Mark, you laid out a devastating case. We know now why they call you the great one. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Levin, thanks for joining Fox and Friends this morning. We appreciate it. Good to see you. Hey, welcome back to another CR Live session with me, host of the Renegade Republican Podcast, Dan Bongino. Thanks to everybody who tunes into the podcast. We had uh, some pretty heavy listenership on today's show where I got into some details about my experience with the Obama administration and the crap they used to pull overseas. These people are totally, completely not credible on foreign security and the people they have out there now on Twitter and their social media forums trying to defend Barack Obama in the post-administration, Obama administration years are totally not credible. These people did things and know things and they know about things that happened that should make you very suspect of anything that comes out of their mouth. Trust me, what I'm telling you is true. So you can listen to the show if you want to find out more on that. But So the New York Times completely beclowned itself today. I don't really like that word, beclown, but in this case, it is absolutely, I think it's a stupid word to beclown yourself. But it's perfectly appropriate for this topic today. The New York Times should be horrified, embarrassed. They pumped for months, and Mark Levin was all over this tonight. If you missed Levin's radio show, you're doing yourself a huge disservice. Go to MarkLevinShow.com. Go to the podcast. Listen to today's show, where he does what he did this weekend on Fox & Friends, where he methodically lays out the case about, here it is in a nutshell. The Democrats wanted the narrative out there that Trump had some illicit Russia connection to discredit their loss in the election, to discredit Trump and make believe that the Russians, I'm holding my phone because I have some notes on this thing I want to show you in a minute, but they wanted the narrative out there that Trump colluded with the Russians to, to uh, slant their election results. They needed to show there was an active investigation going on. So for months they pumped this narrative, there's an investigation going on, there's wiretaps going on. Trump's guilty as sin, folks, he's guilty as sin. This was the New York slimes and the media narrative for months. Matter of fact, there it is. Here's a headline. Here's a, I actually had a, it's on my Twitter too, I had to put yellow lines around it because I don't know if the New York slimes can read their own reporting. You've probably heard about this piece a couple times today. January 19th, New York Times piece by Michael Schmidt. This is a quote from the piece. Because remember, the New York Times narrative now is that if you're talking about a wiretap in Trump Tower, you're a conservative kook and a conspiracy theorist. That's their line now. So remember, you're a conservative. You're talking about Trump's tweet about his wiretap. You're a looney tune. Here's their own writing. One official said intelligence reports based on some of the wiretap communications had been provided to the White House. Let me read that again. That's the New York Times. This is their own writing by Michael Schmidt. One official said intelligence reports based on some of the wiretap communications had been provided to the White House. What is it? No, this is a serious question for the liberal knuckleheads out there. I know now you're trying to parse it. You're trying to say, oh, well, that doesn't mean they wiretapped Trump. It doesn't mean they didn't. That's the point. That's the whole point. You can't say now, after months of trying to push this nonsense narrative, that Trump colluded with the Russians to tilt the election, slant the election results, that there was some kind of illegal activity, that he was being wiretapped, he's being investigated. And now Trump calls you out and says, my, uh, my Trump Tower was wiretapped. And now you say, no, no, there's no investigation. None of this happened. By the way, let's make that Russia thing go away. Do you understand why no one trusts these sleazeballs at the New York Times? This is... They were so hell-bent on painting this false narrative that now they're in a lose-lose situation. Here's the scenario the Slimes is in now. If the New York Slimes admits its own January 19th story is accurate and that their sourcing is correct, that the phones were in fact wiretapped, they said it themselves in their own piece, and that the White House knew about it, then Trump is right. But if they then go to bash Trump, and say, hey, all you people in the conservative movement are conspiracy theorists, including Trump, and his tweet is wrong, then their reporter's an idiot, and the story's a lie, and they're going to have to retract it. They can't possibly have it both ways, folks. You can't report on January 19th that, uh, that Trump's organization was wiretapped, and that the White House knew about it, and had copies of the recordings, and then weeks later report that Trump's a looney tune for saying 
that Trump Tower was wiretapped and it may have been uh, ordered by the White House. You can't have it both ways. It's not possible. But this is what the slimes want you to believe. You know, this is why the American people who voted for Trump and some of the people on the fence even now are so pissed off at what's going on because the media simply can't tell the truth. They can't even acknowledge their own reporting. I can't emphasize to you enough that you go back and listen to Mark's show tonight because Mark lays out all, not just one, but all of the reporting by CNN, by uh, the New York Times, by all these organizations that reported sources claiming wiretaps or reported on the wiretaps from the New York Times story and are now going back and trying to say, Trump's crazy, there's no wiretaps. You can't have it both ways. Hey, by the way, if you haven't signed up for CRTV yet, I strongly encourage you to do so. We're putting out the best conservative content out there. It's commercial free. I got a nice email about that today from a listener of my podcast, by the way. A CRTV subscriber watches Levin's show, Malkin's show, Steve Dace's new show, Stephen Crowder's show. I was really happy he didn't have to sit through commercials. So I really appreciate if you give us a look. Go check out CRTV.com. Thanks for tuning in. See you all tomorrow. President Donald Trump sent off a firestorm. He tweeted the following quote, how low has President Obama gone to tap my phones during the, vac the very sacred election process, this Nixon, Watergate, bad or sick guy? Now, predictably, the left, Democrats, their cronies at the alt-left propaganda destroy Trump media. They went into full-on meltdown mode and declared the president to be a liar once again. Now, there's also been some pushback from the FBI director, James Comey. We'll get to that in a minute. And now, for weeks on this program, on my radio show, I've been discussing what? What I call Obama's shadow government and the career bureaucrats who are actively working against President Trump from inside the government. Many of these are people that are President Obama holdovers. And I've been telling you about we, the people, that there are other people in the intelligence community purposely leaking information to try and damage and destroy President Trump and the advisors, of course, that surround him. One by one, every advisor. They have been smeared, they have been slandered, they have been besmirched, even his children, even his wife and daughter. We've also been reporting on how the alt-left propaganda destroyed Trump media is colluding with these leakers and deep state bureaucrats with the sole purpose of stopping President Trump's agenda to try and delegitimize the president with the hopes of eventually removing the president from power, overturning a free election. Now, is this a conspiracy theory? Paranoia? No. Why? There's a disturbing pattern that's going on here. Now, let's take a look at the case of former Trump National Security Advisor. That's retired Lieutenant General Michael Flynn. Remember news reports? A December call Flynn made to the Russian ambassador, captured by what the New York Times described as a, quote, routine wiretap of Russian diplomats and that phone? Well, now, it's not out of the ordinary, by the way, of our government to monitor foreign officials. That's the smart thing they do. But protections, which are known as minimization procedures, have been put in place to protect Americans that are not under warrant, American citizens that are caught up in their surveillance. And by the way, that their identities are protected, their constitutional rights are to be protected. Now, this, of course, was not the case with Lieutenant General Flynn, because we know a transcript of his call was created and then given to intelligence officials who then leaked this information, which is a felony, to the press that printed it. Now, back in February, when all this was going down, the House Intelligence Committee chairman, and that's Congressman Devin Nunez, he called the quote unprecedented. And then he joined us on this show to explain. Let's take a look. Isn't this the type of thing where if you have a rogue, if you have rogue intelligence people and they're intercepting, illegally intercepting phone calls of Americans, that's illegal. And this, in other words, if in fact they wanted to get the intel or, or for example, hack into the phone of, of, in this particular case, General Flynn, wouldn't they have to get a, a court subpoena to do so? That's correct. And I am not aware that they did that. So my guess is, is that the intelligence agencies did not do this. What, what I'm assuming is, is that this was picked up uh, as they were tracking someone else. Uh, and if that's the case, that would have had to go up to the highest levels of the Obama administration to get approval to unmask who that person is. And in this case, it was General Flynn. Now, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Now, Fox News has not be, been able to confirm this, but the day before the election, November 7, 2016, the website Heat Street, they published a report. It had the following headline, quote, exclusive FBI granted FISA warrant covering Trump camps ties to Russia. And according to Heat Street, in October 2016, the Obama administration 
went to the FISA court, which grants warrants for surveillance for potential spies or terrorists to monitor, which Heat Street described as, quote, U.S. persons in Donald Trump's campaign with ties to Russia. Now, this was part of a larger probe into Russian banks. Now, other outlets like the BBC, The Guardian, have also reported that a FISA court warrant was, in fact, granted. And this is not an isolated incident either. There are countless examples of various federal agencies under President Obama looking into activities of intercepting communications with people associated with the Trump campaign. For example, McClatchy, D.C., posted a story back in January, headline, quote, FBI, five other agencies probe possible covert Kremlin aid to Trump. On the day of the inauguration, January 20th, the front page of the New York Times ran an article with this headline, wiretap data used in inquiry of Trump aides. There's also explosive reports from the Times. The alt-left propaganda destroyed Trump at all costs media has given very little coverage to. In other words, it's not the right-wing conspiracy, it's them. It reads in part, quote, in its final days, the Obama administration expanded the power of the National Security Agency to share globally intercepted personal communications with the government's 16 other intelligence agencies before applying privacy protections. Now, why would President Obama wait until the last minute, two weeks before he's leaving office, to issue that order? An order that did not apply to him for eight years? To me, the opinion is obvious. He wanted as much information, whether it's true or not, to be available to his appointed deep state shadow government officials so they can do exactly what we're seeing, leak it to the press and try and hurt the president with less likelihood that they're going to get caught. Now listen closely as I read this statement that was released by Obama's spokesperson over the weekend. Pay very close attention. A cardinal rule of the Obama administration was that no White House official ever interfered with any independent investigation led by the Department of Justice. As part of that practice, neither President Obama nor any White House official ever, keywords, ordered surveillance on any U.S. citizen. Any suggestion otherwise is simply false. Okay, they didn't order it. Did they know about it? That statement never said that President Obama did not know about it, just that he didn't order it. Even President Obama's former speechwriter noted this on Twitter this past weekend. Now, the question that we need answered is very simple and very basic, and it's this. Did, in fact, the president of the United States, what did he know and when did he know it? In other words, did the president have any answers about the surveillance of an opposition candidate in the middle of an election? Now, the American people deserve the truth, but he doesn't have much credibility on the issue. Why? Because his administration wiretapped the phone of our own colleague, James Rosen. There's also former Attorney General Michael Mukasey, who knows a thing or two about this entire process. Here's what he said. This is the difference between being correct and being right. I think the president was not correct, in, certainly, in saying that President Obama ordered the wire, ordered uh, a tap on a server in, in Trump Tower. However, I think he's right in that there was surveillance and that it was conducted at the behest of um, the attorney of, of the Justice Department through the FISA court. And, and what do you base that on? I base that on news reports. Uh, that you mentioned in, 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 the last, in the last spot. I also base it on a kind of inadvertent uh, blurting out by Adam Schiff that his committee wants to talk to the counterintelligence agents at the FBI who were involved in this. Now, what that means is that this is part not of a criminal investigation, but of an intelligence gathering investigation. Wait, didn't she cry the night of election night? All right, we'll put that aside. All right, on top of all of this, there's a bunch of other questions that need answers. What did President Obama know about these reported, New York Times reported, Pfizer requests targeting associates of then-candidate Donald Trump. Now, to me, what happened to retired Lieutenant General Flynn and what we are now seeing with all these other intelligent leaks, this is a canary in a coal mine. This accusation that President Trump made is serious. We need to get to the bottom of what the truth is and where all of this came from and who knew what, when, and where. Here now with reaction from Levin. Want you, I'm laying out the basics here. You put together in a very comprehensive way, and I give you a lot of credit for putting all this together. This isn't the right-wing conspiracy. This isn't conservative Sean Hannity, conservative Mark Levin. This is the New York Times. This is, this is McClatchy. Explain. And yet it's only conservatives who are concerned about what they're reading in liberal media outlets. Have you noticed that? Hmm. The media is very confounded right now. They're very confused. They don't know whether they trash themselves, trash their colleagues, or what. Now, you asked a question. You said, what did Obama know? We know he knows this much. 
everything you just read, he knew because it's in the newspapers. That's pretty big. Number two, we know that if a FISA warrant was secured, it's very likely in his daily intelligence briefing or a call from the attorney general or the director of the FBI, the president would be given a heads up. There's nothing illegal about it, but he'd be given a heads up. Here's what else we know. There's all kinds of, based on these reports, investigative activities going on. You know, McClatch reported the agencies involved, the FBI, CIA, National Security Agency, Justice Department, Treasury Department's Financial Crimes Enforcement Network. I assume Obama knew something. I mean, unless he's Helen Keller. Now, let me make another point about this. That's a hell of a lot of agency resources. Those are a hell of a lot of investigators. The news report, you mentioned the New York Times, January 20th. I, I just want to make sure CNN and MSNBC are aware of this. They watch all the time, Mark. Illiterate. Nobody's watching them. Go uh, ahead. Why are tap data used in inquiry of Trump aides? I never said independent of news reports about the wiretap. Wiretap data used in inquiry of Trump aides. Well, didn't Mr. Clapper say there were no... FISA orders issue. Can you play that tape for me so I can comment on that I, and pull this together? I think we have that loaded and because he said it on Meet the Press this weekend. But I'll go, we'll get oh, it in a second. Oh, it's very profound. Yeah. Well, but okay, we'll get to well, that in a second. Go ahead. But, but, but let me come on it. It's very, what? very important. Yeah. It's very important because if Clapper says there was no FISA order and he was very broad and he was very definite and he said, no, I, I don't remember this and you'll play it later. Then what the hell are we talking about? That means they didn't have enough information for probable cause to get a warrant in front of the FISA court. So what's the FBI, the CIA, the National Security Agency, the Justice Department, the Treasury Department's Financial Crimes Enforcement Network investigating? What are these wiretaps that the New York Times is talking about? You know, I know they want to focus on Donald Trump and his tweet. I want to focus on America and the Constitution. The reason I got fed up with this last week is I'm a constitutional conservative. I look at this, if I'm reading these news reports, we have a runaway executive branch. I don't know who knows what. And as of today, the media don't appear to know who knows what, which is exactly why I've been calling for congressional investigations. The question is, why aren't CNN, CBS, NBC, MSNBC, and all the rest of them, why aren't they concerned about this? Mark, let me... Rather than mock the president in his tweet, pay attention to what your own reporters and other reporters are saying. So what you say is really deep and profound here, and I want to put some emphasis on this, and that is that the news media reported the leaks, the, new, the news, reader, news media reported the surveillance, they reported it repeatedly. This is the mainstream media. As far as I know, they've never retracted the story, and everybody knew about it. It was not something that was hidden. Now, in fact, Donald Trump mentions that, in fact, it happened, and somehow this is, a, oh, my gosh, this is outrageous. What do we, look? Where, how do we definitively look. find out that, in fact, in June and again in October, there were attempts to surveil the then candidate of the opposition party by the current administration at the time, the Obama administration? Well, two things need to happen, one way or another. Number one, the FISA applications which Clapper denies, by the way. He denies, and the follow-up was pathetic over there at NBC, but we'll get to that. The FISA applications should be released. That's number one. The warrant that was supposedly uh, secured in October should be released. The other thing that needs to be done is these daily presidential briefings that the president received, that the intelligence agencies and law enforcement agencies coordinate on and prepare. The Intelligence Committee chairman need to read them. And now we'll get to the bottom of this. Now, I find it very interesting. People are saying, well, let Trump release the damn FISA stuff. Can you imagine if he does that? He'd be accused of interfering with investigations, trying to intimidate the Justice Department. No, let Congress finally step up and do its job. They have oversight committees. We pay these people to do their job. Now, get into those damn FISA applications. Isn't the reason... Look at the so-called warrant. Hold on now. Yeah. Look at the warrant that was released. <laughs> Look at these daily briefings, and let's see what's in them. All right, great one. We miss having you on. Stay right there. I, I can't speak officially anymore, but uh, I will say that for the part of the national security apparatus that I oversaw as DNI, there was no such wiretap activity mounted against uh, the, pres the, the president-elect at the time or as a candidate or against his campaign. 
Uh, I can't speak for uh, other Title III mm -hmm. authorized uh, entities in the government or uh, a state or local entity. Yeah, I was just going to say, if the FBI, for instance, d had a FISA court order of some sort for a surveillance, would that be information you would know or not know? Yes. You would be told I, this. I would know that. If there was a FISA court order yes. on something like this. Um, something like this, absolutely. And at this point, you can't confirm or deny whether that exists? I can deny it. Oh, well, wait a minute. He's contradicting himself. Former director of national intelligence, Jam James Clapper, yesterday on Meet the Press. We continue with the great one, Mark Levin, from his TV studio in Virginia. Uh, you know, so Obama gives a statement that says they didn't order it. Doesn't mean he doesn't know it. Clapper puts out all these caveats here. Well, the part I oversaw, I can't speak officially. Well, let, me, let, me, let me go ahead. Let me let me take it differently. I accept everything that James Clapper said, and it contradicts every piece of significant reporting over the last six months. If he's saying there was no FISA application, there was no FISA warrant, then why have so many news entities said that there are? That's number one. And number two, why didn't Chuck Todd have Mr. Clapper on weeks ago before I did my radio show, before Donald Trump tweeted? Why didn't he have him on weeks ago to disclaim that this FISA court stuff was hanging out there. Let me explain something where we are here, Sean. They're all pivoting, including the media. They were trying to present the case of overwhelming connections, overwhelming concern, overwhelming potential evidence of Trump and the campaign involved with the Russians. Now it's, wait a minute, no. Because I say, these are police state tactics. Look at all this. You have no basis for all these investigations. Now they're saying, wait a minute, we didn't have a FISA warrant. We didn't do these wiretaps, eavesdropping, electronic surveillance. Now the media are completely confounded. Chuck Todd said, said I got him now. I got the Trump guys now. And I'm, I'm, by the way, I endorsed Cruz, just so the libs know, during the Republican primaries. And I want our president to succeed. This is about the Constitution. Well, you also, so voted, which for, is you also it? voted for Trump. You told your audience. Well, I think absolutely. That's the, right. so, so which is it? Which is it? Were there FISA warrants? or not. Now, if there weren't, why didn't you report that weeks ago? If there are, some of us would like to see them. So we have a real problem right now. The media is turning on the media. We have leaks coming out that are felonies. We have stories about six federal departments and agencies, intelligence and law enforcement, that were investigating something, somebody, by somehow. So what's the answer? That's why we need to get to the bottom of this. Mark. I have a question. Yeah. I have a question. Go ahead. You be the host. Why, why, all the, why all the investigations? Is there any evidence? Was there Mark, any this is evidence? Important. Scintilla of evidence. Hold on. I just need to finish my sentence. Was there any evidence, a scintilla of evidence at all, that Trump, his campaign advisors, None. and his transition None. team were on the take? None. Okay. Then why are six federal departments and agencies involved in an investigation this and now profound. Clapper says he doesn't know anything? This is profound for a lot of different ways because we're talking about Fourth Amendment protections, First Amendment protections, Fifth Amendment protections, Sixth Amendment protections. There's so many, and the question that every American needs now, to know. Now, we're talking I, about police state tactics. I understand. And it, by an is, executive all branch, of that potentially. Is true because if they can do what they did to Michael Flynn, General Flynn, and that is here whenever they did not they have every right to go after a Russian ambassador but the law the Espionage Act is clear that if they hear and identify an American on that line they are not allowed to tape that American and they're supposed to follow a process called minimization why does this matter because this is unreasonable search and seizure and if they can do it to a presidential candidate right now either they did it or they didn't now if they didn't do it then that means the New York Times owes the country an apology that means every major the newspaper New and every major okay. network owes the American people an apology, right? Here's the New York Times, January 20th. Wiretap data used in inquiry of Trump aides. You wrote this earlier. One paragraph, please. The FBI is leading the investigation. Aided by the National Security Agency, the CIA, the Treasury Department's Financial Crimes Unit. More. The investigators have accelerated their effort. This is on inauguration morning, front page above the fold. The investigators have accelerated their efforts in recent weeks, but have found no conclusive evidence of wrongdoing, the official said. One official said, listen to this, intelligence reports based on some of the wiretap communications have been provided to the White House. Now, I didn't, you didn't write that. I asked Mr. Clapper, the FBI's leading an investigation. Did you know about that, sir? 
aided by the NSA? Did you know about that, sir? And the CIA? Did you know about that, sir? And the Treasury Department? Did you know about that, sir? Did you know that the uh, one official said intelligence reports based on some of the wiretap communications had been provided to the White House? Did you know about that? And Chuck Todd, why didn't you ask him these questions? That's my question. Why are the Let media me so, a quick last so lackadaisical I'm and not curious? Yep. You know, because you, because you put all this together and you made a, it's such a compelling prosecutorial case here that it can't be argued intelligently because it's either one or the other. But then you, get, then you get attacked by these little pipsqueaks on television. Let's, let's go to one example. There's a lot what of does the White House gain by the president of the United by Steve Bannon most likely handing the president of the United States a, a Breitbart, Breitbart article. article and 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 talking about what a rabid right wing talk show host uh, has been theorizing? Liberal Joe is <laughs> liberal well, Joe's me... calling you a rabid right wing host, Mark. Well, he's a chameleon, but let me just say this, Joe. Here's what I do know. <laughs> you remember the movie Deliverance, the of guy course. with the guitar on the bridge? Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. Joe's the splitting image, isn't he? <laughs> yes, he's the splitting image. <laughs> okay. Listen, I got to go. I'm out of tea. Will you come on the show more often? I, because if I don't pressure you publicly, you won't come on. Uh, you're invited on all the time. You're one of my best friends, and you never come on the show. But tell the audience why. We got Levin TV right here, baby. CRTV. <laughs> you can still come on but this I show will. occasionally. I'll come on more often. All right. Great one. Yes, By sir. the way, there's a reason God I call bless. you the great one. Thank you, my friend. Good Thank to see you. you. You too. Very compelling.